Hi there, I was hoping to get this video out on Thursday morning, but this week was pretty busy and I'm running a little bit behind on my schedule. For Friday morning, I was hoping to release my character shop system, but it looks like that's not gonna happen this Friday. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, this is a perfect time to subscribe. And I think you want to turn on the notification bell because I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to miss the next video. So the topic for this video is going to be checkpoints. We received a lot of requests for this topic. The video is going to have two parts. We're going to start by showing a simple way how to use a checkpoints. And for the second part, we're going to go a little bit more advanced and show a solution to a question that one of our patron supporters asked. So let's start. Usually I like to use templates, but I think it'd be better to demonstrate checkpoint system from a clean project so that there won't be any confusion with the existing structure of the template. Let's create a new project, 2D world, and the checkpoint system works the same in 3D game and 2D game. And let's go to our 2D world. We'll add some assets so that we can demonstrate the checkpoint system. We'll use a circle for our character, a triangle for our enemy, and a ring for our checkpoint. We'll rename them and change the colors. Now let's first configure our checkpoint. So let's double click to go on checkpoint. And Billbox currently provides three checkpoint nodes for their checkpoint system. And for our checkpoint, we'll use the set checkpoint node. How the set checkpoint node works is when you trigger enabled, it stores this entity's position as the point where the character is gonna get loaded. It stores the character object that collided with it, and it stores the scene and the world where the checkpoint was set. So if you're using multiple worlds, the set checkpoint only affects the world that it was triggered in. Now how we want to trigger the set checkpoint is when our character collides with it. So for that, we'll add a if collide node. We'll connect collide to enabled and enabled to create it and set the affected asset to character. You can go ahead and remove the checkpoint or change the animation color or something to let the player know that the state was changed, but we'll leave it as is. Now let's go to our character and double click on it. And then here we'll use the second node called a load checkpoint. And what this node does is it sets the flag so that when the next time we load the world, the world will load a character to the checkpoint that we set. There's different ways you can use this node to load checkpoints. To list a few, you could connect the load checkpoint to one of your UI buttons in the game over screen, or you could connect it to a reward video. So the only time when the character loads to the checkpoint is when they watched a rewarded video or you can load the checkpoint each time the character collides with an enemy. And that's the one we're gonna use to demonstrate. So for that, we'll use a if collide. And let's connect it to create it and collide to load checkpoint. And we'll set the affected asset to enemy. We're gonna come back to our character later, but for now, let's go add the last checkpoint node and the place where you can find the third checkpoint node, you go to mind map, select the 2D world where you want the checkpoint to be loaded. And in the bottom corner, we have the edit components button. When you click on that, you get the node map for the world. Inside here, if we search for checkpoint, we can see that we have a third checkpoint node and it's the checkpoint loader. And this node is what makes the world to check if there are any checkpoints that need to be loaded. So now we added all three checkpoint nodes. And now what we wanna do is build out the scene so that we can see how it all works together. Before we do that, let's save. And now we're done with our world node map. So we can close that. Now let's go to our 2D world. 
and let's build out our game. So first, let's drag our character to our characters. And we want to do that so that we can select our camera and set the camera to follow our character. Then what we want to do is create another scene and we'll do that by selecting the start scene and clicking D to duplicate. Let's rename it to one. So some important things to know about the checkpoint system. When the game is loaded from a checkpoint, the world creates the character at the checkpoint position. So the reason why that is important is because it limits where you can place your character. So just like when you create levels in the world, and we've made a tutorial video about that, to be sure that you will never have two characters in your game, you should place your character in the start scene. So let's do that. Let's place our character in the start scene. And we can't set any checkpoints in our start scene. Because if we do, whenever we reload from checkpoint, the start scene already has a character and our checkpoint loader will load the character again. So we'll have two characters in the scene. So that's why we'll just keep the character in start scene. And in scene one, we can start building our game. So let's add a checkpoint here. And we'll add an enemy. And for our character to be able to collide with our enemy, we'll need to enable some kind of physics on their enemy and we'll set it to static. Let's duplicate our scene and let's rename our scene to two. And we'll need to remove their character and duplicate our enemy. So we'll have two enemies in our scene too. And let's create some more scenes. If you want, you can use multiple checkpoints in one scene, but the character is going to spawn at the checkpoint, which was set the last. Okay, we've made four scenes. Now let's go to our character and add some more logic. When you trigger low checkpoint, the checkpoint does not get loaded right away. You have to use some kind of event or something to redirect to the world. And we'll add an event observer. And let's trigger game over. And one more thing that we'll add for our character is touch move. And we'll connect it to create it. And we want to switch our screen Y to world Y and invert Y direction. And let's also turn on physics to kinematic for our character so that we can collide with the checkpoint. Let's go to our mind map and we'll add a UI screen, connect it to our world UI, edit, and let's add an event observer. We'll look for the event type game over. And now if we go back to our mind map, we can see that our UI screen has an event observer output. What we can do is connect it to our 2D world. Whenever we get the game over event, our 2D world gets reloaded. Now we have our game configured. And before we click preview, let's go to edit and set to align scenes so that our scenes will be ordered. Let's click play. And here is our first checkpoint. If we don't collide with the checkpoint and hit the enemy, our game starts from the start. But if we collect the checkpoint, and then hit the enemy, we get spawned back to the checkpoint. So, and we can continue. Here's our scene three. So we collect that checkpoint and we spawn back to the checkpoint. So this is a simple way to set up a checkpoint system into your game. One important thing that I think we should mention again is you can't put checkpoints in the same scene where you have a character. Now let's start part two. So for part two, we'll use multiple worlds. So we'll switch to our paid build box version. We launched our paid version and now let's go back to our project. So let's open it up. And here's what we're gonna do for part two. 
we will create a world that will have multiple doors. And when you go into one door, it switches to a new world. And then when you exit out, you get spawned back to the door that you entered. So let's create a 2D world. So we'll just create two rooms. So let's create two more 2D worlds. And let's rename it to room one and room two. Actually, for the hall, we're gonna use the 2D world that we've created already. Let's drop the UI. And let's go to our 2D world. We'll keep the start scene exactly the same. And let's remove scene two, three, and four. In scene one, we'll remove the enemy. And let's create another asset and we'll use the rectangular for our door. So this is gonna be our door one. We're just gonna go to room one. And inside our door, what we'll do is add if collide. And when our character collides with the door, we'll add an event and we'll do a menu jump. Rename our event to room one. Go back to 2D world. That's gonna be our door one and create a door two. And we'll change the color to orange. So let's add our door two. And the reason for not making the door as a checkpoint, but having a checkpoint in front of it, is that when the character gets spawned back, we don't want him to trigger the door again and go back into the room. Now let's go to door two and make sure we switch the event to room two. Okay, and now we can go back to our mind map and we can connect our rooms. Room one and room two. Let's go inside our room one and we'll need another door and we'll call this door back. Let's make it red. Let's place our character where we want him to be. And we'll add our door in the back of the character. And for our door back, we want to add the load checkpoint node and connect it on collide so that when we go back to our hall, we load at the checkpoint. And let's rename our event from room two to go back. And I think we should add a delay before we trigger the menu jump to go back. And a delay of 0.1, I think we'll do. Back to our mind map. And we can connect, go back to load our 2D world. And we can do the same thing in our room too. Let's put our door here character and to have something different in our room too let's add some enemies back to our mind map connect a go back let's click preview so let's first test out our room one here's our room one and we go back to our door and we get placed right on the checkpoint now let's go to room two and here's our room two go back and we get placed on the checkpoint so this is more of a specific way you could use checkpoints to create this kind of gameplay. You can use this technique in some kind of RPG game. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and be sure to subscribe and click on the notification button because our next video is going to be on our shop system and you don't want to miss that video. So we will see you next time.